Hello, I'm Mark, Mark Southwell. I'm the Volunteer Lifeboat Operations Manager at Cows Arna Life Station. Uh, and that's where we are this afternoon. I've got one of my crew filming this. Um, there's just the two of us here at the moment, keeping us far apart as we can from each other. Uh, we've been greatly affected, as everybody has been, by the pandemic and the national emergency. We started as early as March the 16th, where we started to reduce the number of exercises we held in this building, uh, which is in front of me, the lifeboat station. It's a long, skinny building, and we can have 25, 30 people on a traditional crew night, and it would be difficult to keep everybody apart. So we started quite early by saying no more than two exercises a week, and then only for the four people on the boat and the four people it takes to launch it and um, just generally look after everything. So that was our first step, May the 16th, uh, March the 16th, beg your pardon. Same day, we had information from the Arnold Light that the fundraising would have to stop, uh, not just here on the Arnold Light, everywhere in Britain and Ireland. Uh, the shops would have to shut, and we would no longer be allowed to have visitors at the lifeboat station. So that was quite an immediate reaction that, I wouldn't say stunned us, um, we were half expecting this to happen, but it was that immediate see, and this is final now, you've got to change the way you operate and the way we've been operating since 2008 when we became an RRI station. By March the 24th, as soon as the Prime Minister had made his announcement, we were more severely restricted in that those exercises now had to stop. We were allowed to launch the lifeboat for an emergency and that was it. Uh, and that's the situation we've been in since March the 24th. We've been asked to go out twice. Um, on both occasions it was a person in, on or close to the water that needed assistance and I'm very pleased to say that our launch was cancelled before everybody could get here because the situation had been resolved satisfactorily. It's obviously very, very good news. We immediately thought about well, how are we going to run this station completely differently to the way we do. If there is a shout, we could get 20 people here, we could only get 7 or 8. So we've got that many people all piling in through a very small front door into the changing room and the launch area. It's a very tight space. Clearly that couldn't carry on. So we issued temporary launch instructions to everybody and for everybody to adhere to, which is about stay outside in your car if it's raining, get out of the car if it's dry, keep this distance from each other. You must not enter that building, this building, until the um, launch authority who's given permission for the launch to happen turns up. He or she will then explain what the mission is and we'll select a boat crew and shore crew accordingly. Uh, only the minimum number of people we could use and then we can send the rest home. It's as simple as that. Obviously, um, we still need to keep in touch with each other. Uh, there are best part of 50 people who are members, volunteers, all uh, of this lifeboat station. They carry out very many different roles. We can have 25, half of them here at what we call crew night. We have a briefing um, when everybody arrives. I just update everybody on what's happening. Then the boat goes out on an exercise, and when the launch crew are back in uh, lifeboat station, we'll do some form of theory training, uh, and then obviously the boat comes back. People then go home, or they may go for a social drink. Well, that's all changed. We can't do that anymore uh, for the obvious reasons, and I've already explained. So we then decided that it would be best to use all the technology that's now increasingly popular. And the crew member who's taken this video is great for the IT, and he created virtual crew nights. Uh, they've been a success. People do miss seeing one another. Uh, what's interesting about every lifeboat station, it brings a lot of local people together who wouldn't necessarily meet up unless they were part of the lifeboat. Interesting backgrounds, um, very different types of people and they all seem to get on really, really well together. So not being able to have that link, we would suffer, I think, in the long term. So we've managed to keep some contact up uh, through these virtual crew nights. We have practiced this launch safely a couple of times, taken the advice of NHS staff who are part of the lifeboat. It's been great. Their practical advice has been absolutely fantastic. As you know, they're at the front line of all this, and they brought their skills and experiences to us say well this is the safest way you can come to the station, launch and uh, make sure that everybody's okay on the boat goes So that's been that's been good. Uh, it's very important I, I believe um, as the leader of the station if you like uh, to keep people informed. There's nothing worse than 
fear created by not really knowing what's going on and imagining all sorts of things that might be happening, might not be happening. So every bit of information that I think is relevant to us as lifeboat crew, people use the Solent, um, people go on boats, uh, our visits team as well. I push that information out, invariably in form of an email or on a website, uh, so that people are as well informed as they can be. The government's announcement, announcements on who can go on the water and when and how have to be very, very clear about that. Um, it's really good news to see that it is now part of your permitted daily exercise to go on the water. That's been fantastic. And I have to say, this is now Sunday afternoon. I've watched the Solent intently. Uh, I go down there every single day with my dog. The dog's walking. He's been watching the last nine weeks. It's been empty. I mean, completely empty. And it's now just picked up to a very gentle bit of activity, which is quite interesting. It, it, it does appear that the people I've spoken to that love the boats, love their water, love kayaking, paddleboarding, whatever it is, taking it seriously, taking it responsibly, and are doing absolutely the right thing. So much so that we haven't been called out this first busy weekend. I had expected it. Limited have been out, Cowshot have been out, and Benbridge has been out nearly every single day. Um, something. It just seems to be that these services, these passings, go in, in circles, uh, um, in pulses. And Benbridge seems to be the ones that um, in it at the moment. As you can see, the boats are coming in and out. They're under strict instructions if they live in the marina, which a lot of them do, is they can go, in, go out in the morning, come back in the evening, whatever. It's not to be left overnight. You can't sleep on your boat. You can't have a nice cruise down the West Country to Dartmouth, say, or have any kind of racing that's completely out the window. And quite understandably so, that brings too many people together, too many people or to new people, to marinas, and clearly that's not happening. We're a typical um, mixed station. Um, there isn't a big beach near here. Uh, we don't have a huge number of marinas. Cowes is very much a destination port. There isn't a huge number of boats actually based here. So many of our services to the public are the ones who come to visit, who are passing through, en route, goes a bit wrong, and need some assistance, and we bring them in here. It last year started off really interestingly. The very first three taskings we had, the first three times the pager went off, uh, was for three completely different types of boat. A small fishing boat, motor, an extremely large sailing catamaran, and a traditional racing cruising yacht. And all three, they had problems with their steering and simply couldn't get anywhere and did need assistance. So the first trip out for each of them um, of the year uh, ended up with having assistance from Cow's lifeboat. And that's not unusual. We do readily go out to assist the human. That's what a lifeboat is principally for. Uh, there are injuries afloat, unfortunately. Um, this is the real world. People get uh, head bangs when it's windy when they're racing. Uh, sometimes people slip, they'll break a limb. Uh, heart attacks and other conditions are not uncommon um, in life on the water. They happen on shore as well. It's the lifeboat that goes and gets the casualty. And we bring them ashore and hand them over to paramedics and professionals. Serious cases, the helicopter turns up and we'll airlift them and take them for medical care. We're very um, fortunate, if that's the right way of putting it, to be very, very close to the main casualty landing spot for cows, Trinity Landing. Uh, we can see it from the station, it's a couple of hundred yards away. And quite often, because of the speed of response of the crew, we are likely to be the first of the emergency services to actually arrive on scene. Head of the police, the ambulance, the coast guard, quite often. And our crew, a mixture of whom on shore trained uh, in first aid and casualty care, will start to assist uh, before the professionals turn up, uh, the ambulance, and we can hand over to them. Uh, so it's quite a key position that we're in here uh, in Cowes. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing to do. I'm not concerned that we're going to lose our ethos or we'll lose who we are or what we are. These two practice launches that we've undertaken recently, there was an excellent turnout for each of them. 20, 20 members of the station came to each one, but we had to stick to the rules that we've, we've, we've created. We had to send a, a large number home because there simply would be too many people in this building. We can't do that. We can't do it on a practice. We can't do it for real. So we just don't do it, full stop. You'll your, your see as you, there's a film goes through the building, there's little sanitizer bottles all over the place. There's extra notices. Uh, we've done very simple things like the shore crew are required to wear 
life jackets to come out here to launch the boat. They traditionally live in the changing room. They've been taken out of the changing room, put in the boat hall, uh, and they're expected to get their kit on in the boat hall, and the boat crew, in limited numbers, can get changed in the changing room. It's two at a time, so there's plenty of room, plenty of space. Yes, it's delayed uh, the start of the launch of this lifeboat, um, but it's a safe launch then. And it's much better that we get out there in good order, safely, and it adds another eight, seven minutes to our launch. That is not a problem in, in my mind. And I'm sure the public would understand that it's better that we go out there fully equipped properly, crew have visors down, have gloves on, they've got um, equipment on the boat to sanitise when they reach a casualty. It's very important that this is all remembered, it's all taken, everybody dresses appropriately, and most importantly, when everybody gets back, then there's the reverse process, that everything is cleaned, everything's washed down, it, it always is. Um, a boat has to go away pristine, otherwise it may not be ready the next time you need it. There's just a bit more work being done at the moment. And I'm sure you'll all agree, or you've probably heard, the scientific advisors suggest the fresh air is the best place to be. But I suppose the fresh air and the mixture of salt water is probably an even safer place for the environment to be. But of course, that's until you have contact with humans. And that's what we need to be very, very, very careful about. One thing I would just ask, uh, as a volunteer who does this, and in, on behalf of all my uh, fellow volunteers throughout Britain and Ireland, if you don't need to go on the water, don't. If you do go on the water, Make sure your kit's ready, the engine works, you've got some fuel, you know what the tide is, you know what the weather's like, and you know your limitations. Have a nice trip out, do it quickly, get back in safely, go home, and enjoy yourselves, because it's a lovely place to be. And hopefully, some weeks to come, months to come, we'll all be back out there doing all the things we love, particularly well. Well, we're back upstairs in the main part of the building, which is used for our meetings and for our training. Training is so important to all lifeboat stations. Uh, it is true that the vast majority of people at this station didn't necessarily have a, bo a boating background when they joined us. So they do need to be trained to the RMI standard, pass that training, and then prove that they are proficient. Normally, on a crew night, they would come back in here and do some training. Uh, so a lot of it is online these days, but a lot of it is by presentation. That's all gone, we cannot do that. Uh, there is no substitute for training that we can't do on the water, we just have to accept we can't do that. But everything else we can, and Will, who well, I've told you before, has um, created the boat for crew nights. He's helped create some really good training aids, again online, that's unique to our station. Crew come down, they'll one the pump up, the, what we put on the boat, and then there'll be a video put around, well, this is how to use the pump, how to care for the pump. The Arm Ally have provided some good training videos, there's an excellent one on towing on an our class of lifeboat, very informative video. So there's plenty to do, there's, there's no reason why people shouldn't be training at the moment. The one and only thing that we are all missing is the ability to get out of the water and to do this for real. But as I said earlier, hopefully soon.